Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel or welcome here if it's your first time and in this video I'm reviewing the FIO Q15 portable DAC and headphone amplifier. Let's get it. What's cracking audio fans, it's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. So there is the Q15 in all its glory. Let me start as always by telling you the price, which is $399. Now inside of here, we've got AKM's flagship AK4191 plus AK4499 EX DAC combo Man, I wish they would change that name. Just call it the bloody, call it the bluebird or call it, call it just whatever you want. Just please don't make me do that ever again. So this little device is, you can use it on the desktop, you can use it on the go, you can connect it to your phone via a cable, or it's also got Bluetooth with all those lovely uh, hi-fi or high-quality wireless Bluetooth codecs like aptX, LL, HD and LDAC and all that good stuff. And this thing is powerful. I'm talking 1600 milliwatts out of the balanced output. So you can throw pretty much any headphones at this and it will take them on without any problems whatsoever. But you know, you can also use these with IEMs, even sensitive IEMs, because there are in total five different gain levels. So it's pretty much compatible with everything. So let me show you around the unit. First of all, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, now I have the case on the uh, cover or case, and this is an optional extra. But if you shop around, you can sometimes get it as part of a bundle. But let's bring it out and show the device. So here we are in all its native glory. Look at that. There's a big glass panel down the front, and part of that is a TFT LCD screen. I'll show you that now. There you go, look at that, isn't it awesome? And this can actually rotate. You can rotate it upside down or side to side, whichever way. So no matter how, which pocket you put it in or how you like to position it on your desk, etc., you can always have the screen or the display facing the correct way. And it shows you all kinds of interesting and useful information like in battery level there, the, um, the selected input, it will also show you the Bluetooth codec or the sample rate, current sample rate and the volume, of course. Now here on the top of the unit, you've got your volume knob, which is obviously also a button. Then you've got a single-ended 3.5 millimeter output or unbalanced output and a balanced 4.4 millimeter output. On the rear of the device from left to right, first of all, you've got a phone mode switch. And what that does when enabled or turned on, this device will not, will it will use its own internal battery. It does not drain the your phone's battery. Pretty straightforward, but very useful. Then you've got a coaxial in, you've got a USB type C input. Uh, you can actually charge the device with this input as well, but there's another dedicated power input there only for power. If you're utilizing both of these USB ports, you can enable a desktop mode. And what that does is it bypasses the battery completely. And that also enables the uh, ultra high gain or maximum power mode. Now lastly on the side here are your power button and playback controls. That's your, what is it? It's a previous track, play, pause and next track. Let's have a look through the system now. A short press on this button will give you the um, input select screen. While a long press will take you to the main system menu. From here you can choose your gain settings. There are five in total. There's another gain setting in the main section there but for now we're on high then you've got single ended and balanced output options and with both of these you can set them to either line out or phone out you can set the line out volume set the maximum volume and there's your ultra high gain there which is only available when you're plugged in via the um, second usb port here are the digital filters got your standard selection there i keep mine on fast and you can dim the screen, you can set the screen timeout and the idle time. 
you can rotate the screen, which is what I said before, and put you put it into parametric EQ mode, etc. And all those good things. So that's a quick look at the system menu. I do quickly want to talk about the battery life. So for a battery life, you're looking at around nine hours. That of course will depend on factors like which headphones you're using and what volume level you are at. But that should get most people through a day. But if you need to recharge, you will be waiting at least three and a half hours for a full charge. In desktop mode though, the, um, the Q15 bypasses the battery altogether, which is excellent. And in phone mode, like I mentioned before, it uses the built-in battery exclusively and it doesn't use your phone's battery. But let's get into the sound. How does this sound? I would say that it has a slightly warm and organic sound signature. And that's not unlike other DAPs or DACs with that AK combo DAC chip set up. It has a nice muscular effortlessness to it, but it's still able to tread lightly when playing delicate music passages. There's load of power on tap, like I said, up to 1600 milliwatts. So things like the, um, the Fio FT3 here pose no problem regarding drivability. Um, with these headphones, I was hovering around 50 on the volume in high gain. Heck, with five different gain levels, this can adapt to pretty much anything, whether they be demanding headphones or sensitive in-ear monitors. The end-to-end -end extension is excellent. Bass notes are full-bodied and they dig deep. Hi-hats and cymbals float off into the ether with a nice natural decay. Um, the, the Q15 leans a little on the warmer side of neutral. It enhances the warmth of acoustic tracks and adds a pleasant smoothness to vocals. But despite its soulful nature, the Q15 preserves the integrity of the audio, allowing you to pick up on all the intricate details. And that combination of warmth, transparency and clarity makes this a very versatile and enjoyable device across multiple music genres and it also has very lovely staging it's got excellent excellent sound stage depth and it's got very precise imaging as well that of course depends somewhat on your transducers or your headphones IEMs etc but the staging on this DAC is very very good for the price now I want to do a little comparison real quick and this is the X Duo XDO5 BAL2. It's also a lovely device. It's very similar in functionality. It costs slightly more than the FIO, but there are reasons for that. Uh, first of all, I will say that the X Duo features dual ES9038Q2M DAC chips. So if you are a fan of the ESS or the Sabre DACs, then you'll love this. Power output is uh, almost the same. It's 1500 milliwatts compared to 1600 maximum on the FIO. They both have a muscular, self-assured audio character. I think the the X Duo here has a more neutral presentation, which gives it a, a slightly leaner tone, slightly better micro detail retrieval, but it is a little bit more raw sounding compared to the Q15, which is, like I said, soulful. When it comes to features though, the X Duo only has two gain modes compared to five on the Q15 but it does have a bass boost. And let me show you the front of it here. That's your power switch, turbo, which is basically low and high gain, and then your bass boost. So if you're a bass head, you might prefer the X-Duo. But have a look around on the back here because the X-Duo has more input options. So first of all, you've got auxiliary in and out, your USB in, it's got an AES connection, which is rather unusual. And it's got, that's a, just a power in. And then you've got coaxial and optical as well. So it's a bit, little bit more versatile in terms of input. It's got this lovely vibrant red volume barrel on the side. And on the front, you've got a 6.35 millimeter input and a 
uh, sorry, headphone output and a 4.4 millimeter balanced output. It does have a little display, OLED display as well, but it is a lot smaller and not as useful as the one on the Fio. But this also has digital filters. Um, I don't like the playback controls as much. Yeah, these have double function buttons. It's a bit confusing to, to, there's a bit of a learning curve is what I'm trying to say. And look, these are really both fantastic options. Um, which one is better will probably depend on which features that you want or more specifically, which IO options that you care about. And by the way, they both have the same high quality audio, the wireless audio codec. So they both got aptX and LDAC and all that stuff. All right, let's come back to the Q15 and summarize here. And look, honestly, I think for 399 bucks, it's not throwaway money, but for what you're getting, I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, I mean, especially if you have demanding headphones, if you need a lot of output power that sometimes you want to go mobile with, like you want to use your phone as a source while you, you know, take it out in the backyard, maybe even a bus ride or a train ride. You know, you can take it uh, between home and the office, etc. Use it on the desktop as well. It's a really good device. I love the I love the display. It's very useful. Let me come back to the main screen there. Yeah, I love the vibrant, colorful display there. The um, playback controls are, have a nice tactile click. And overall, yeah, I really like the Fio Q15. I will give it my full recommendation. And having said that, I'm going to wrap it up now. So thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, Parfum audio file style. If you're new here and you want to see more content like this in the future, consider hitting that subscribe button before you go. And until next time, I'll see you later.